So recently, a ton of people have been loving my Google Sites tutorial videos. One I did on Google Site icons for social media, and the other one I did on a complete Google Sites build tutorial. And basically, a lot of people have been leaving really cool comments wanting to see more, so I thought today I would update you on some features in 2021 for Google Sites, as well as just some other features that I found that I don't think a lot of people know about, and are really good to create this professional but also simplistic Google Sites website that, again, is completely free. And I think it's really great that people are finally finding Google Sites because it's a great program, probably the best free website builder in my opinion, and I think a lot of people just didn't know about it before and now everyone's discovering it, making great websites with the program and sending me the links to them, and I'm I'm really liking what I'm seeing, so I just thought I'd help you guys out some more and make your websites even better. So let's jump into it. So like always, the first thing we're going to do is go to sites.google.com where you just access all of your information for Google Sites and I'm just going to open up the site that I've been working on lately. As you're going to be able to see, if you've seen my past videos, I have made some updates to this website, upgraded a few different things that I'm going to be showing you today. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know that Google Sites previously didn't really have options to adjust fonts. The only fonts you had were the themed fonts. So if you chose a theme like vision the only font options you'd have were the font styles and you'd only have these three different options but thankfully now in Google Sites they've completely changed that and you can pretty much use any font that you want so as you can see here I have this kind of typewriter looking font for my website that was inspired by some other sites but basically if you click anywhere on your fonts now you can see that under the font drop down menu you have all these different options that are built into Google and you can also go into more fonts and look through their entire library, which is super cool. You have all these different options now. So that was honestly something that was really limiting Google Sites from other website platforms. You really just couldn't change the font that much. The fonts they had did look pretty good. They were all pretty clean and simplistic, but now you just have a lot more flexibility to get creative with your site. But one tip I'd have about this is to not go crazy with the fonts. Don't switch the font on every page or halfway through the page. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to keep the same font throughout the entire website just to keep continuity. So that's just my only advice, but now you have all this different flexibility with fonts. So as you can see on my site, if I go into one of my other areas, like if I go to my video section, you can now see I've changed the font in all these different areas. So all these headings and all this down space down here, I've changed the font. So it just looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. It's just the style I'm going for, but again, you can change it to whatever you want. And with these new fonts, you can now change the text color as well, which is something you couldn't do before. So if you just click on it, go up to this little A here, you can click text color and change it to something like red. So you can get more stylistic, adjust your website the way you want it, and you don't have to be locked into that black or white world. You can get much more creative with the color. So I think that's really cool. So the next thing I wanna talk about that I don't think a lot of people utilize is the pages icon in Google Sites. Now this has actually been around here for a long time, and you might know that you can change your different pages. You can add all your new pages under this section. For example, like me, I have video, photo, YouTube, things like that. But before what I had is all these clustered sites. So I had a bunch of different links down here, which just made it more confusing, less simplistic and just worse for a person visiting your site. So now what I've done is under video, you can see there's a drop down here and I have different links under that, which makes it much cleaner and much easier to find your work and organize it neatly. And how you do this is actually really simple. Once you've made your base page, say video here, all you have to do is click the little three dots on the right hand side and then click add sub page under that. And you're gonna name your new sub page, let's just say short film, for example, you click done and it creates a new page under this page, which is really great and helps you to find stuff easier. So for example, if I go to my sidebar to navigate to something, you'll see video here. And if I click the little drop down here, you can now see short film is one of those bars under there. So it just makes it a lot easier to find things and organize your projects. So if we look at my specific website, for example, if we go under video, when I first click video, it's gonna bring up my normal video page. So it has a heading up here and then all my different work. So cinematography, some examples of that, editing, some examples of that, and so on. But if we go back to the navigation page, what you're gonna see is all these different drop downs. So if I click from the ashes, for example, it's gonna bring up a specific page just for my documentary. So it's not clustered in between all my other work, it's under a video, but it has its own sub page. So it's really neat here. You can see we have the title here. I added a little log line here so you can have an idea of what it's talking about the short film, and then some images that relate to it. So I just like that formatted style. Again, you can do whatever you want, but I just think this is a cool idea to integrate into those sub pages where you can add specific projects and works that you've done. And so again, for another example of this, if we go back into my drop down sidebar, you can see we have from the ashes. If I go to the next one, we have the workaround. Again, the same format, title, description, video, and then we have some still photos under here. And then if we go back again, you can see I've added some of my commercial work. So this is gonna be commercials that I've done, a little bit of information about them, and then just order where you can watch them in this page. 
So I didn't know about these sub pages before, but I think they're a really great way to contain your information within a specific page. So like I have video here, I can just close that up. And if I want to see more information about it, you have all that stuff contained inside of one page. So I think that's really cool. And then lastly, in this video, I want to talk about the concept of embedding links into your project. So as you can see in this commercial page here, I have some Google Drive links to videos. But when I go to my actual website to play this stuff back, when I click on a Google Drive link, I'm just not super psyched on how it looks. I think it's a bit clunky and it can take you directly to Google Drive or someone could download that file hypothetically. So I'm just not a really big fan of how this looks. Of course, you can upload a video to YouTube and embed it really easily into your project just by using the YouTube insert button over here on the side, but it's really easy to insert Google Drive and YouTube stuff because they're owned by Google just like Google Sites. So they really want to encourage you to use their own stuff. Of course, they want you to use YouTube and Google Drive because they already own all that property. But if you've ever looked at another filmmaker's website, chances are that they're using a Vimeo link embedded into their website to play those sample videos that they're showing in their portfolio. So like as you can see in this website, everything is Vimeo. And again, this person has the similar idea of adding the photos underneath, which I think is a really good touch. And on that note, if you're a filmmaker, photographer, artist, whatever it is, if you have an artist that you're inspired by go to their website check out what they did and get ideas off of that it's just a really good idea to bring back into Google Sites even if they used a different platform to build their website. But let's get back to embedding links into Google Sites. Now this has been around forever inside of Google Sites into Google Sites Classic, but it can be a little bit daunting if you don't know how to do it. And you can see inside of Insert right here in Google Sites, Embed is one of the top options. It's really easy to do, but again, it can be a little bit confusing if you don't know what you're doing. So let's go to Vimeo where I uploaded my video. And as you can see, I have my video completely uploaded here, similar to how you would find on something like YouTube. But what we're going to do is click the little icon here for share. Once you click on that, you're always going to have the option in most sites to embed your video. When you see this embed option, it's also available on YouTube and many other sites. What you can do basically here is click show options. It's going to bring up more options and basically you can change how this embedded link is going to show up on your website. For me personally, the default settings work pretty well. I'm fine with this resolution and I don't want to show text underneath the video or show a description. So basically all I have to do is go back up to this embedded link, copy this full thing, just command C, copy that. And now we're going to go back to Google Sites. So once I've copied that embed code, I'm going to go back to Google Sites, click embed right here. And once it's going to bring that up, you're going to see by URL or by embed code. And we're going to click by embed code, it usually just makes it work better, makes it fit better into Google Sites and isn't as wonky. So once you have this HTML code, you're just going to paste with command V, it's going to paste that exact code you just copied, you're going to click next, and it should bring up a sample of that video. So as you can see, here's the Vimeo link I just copied and you can see with the thumbnail and everything there. So I'm just going to click insert, and it's going to immediately drop it into my Google site. So now there's a Vimeo video embedded into your Google site. Of course, you can super easily change the size of it just by moving these toggles around just to make it fit better into your Google site. But just like all these other videos that were from Google Drive, now this video is from Vimeo inside of Google Sites and it will play back perfectly, super easily inside of your website. I personally am just a bigger fan of embedding videos from Vimeo or YouTube other than Google Drive because I think it just looks a little bit cleaner and matches what other people do on their websites that are actual professionally purchased websites that aren't free. So it's super cool how you can make it look professional, on Google Sites, again, completely for free. But anyway, that's basically all I wanted to talk about today, just some new things in 2021 for Google Sites, including that text and color options, some new options that I've discovered recently with sub pages, as well as embedding files. So I hope that was helpful. If you like the music in this video, be sure to click the link in the description down below. You can get two months free in addition to Artlist annual music plan, which is a great resource for royalty free music. They'll set you up and it's super awesome. You can check it out, link in the description down below. But that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.